Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We like to mix it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined by the one and only Kristen Howlett tonight. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello our WATD listeners. <laughs> Um, Mary is actually here. She's upstairs. She's working on some things, um, getting a bunch of stuff under agreement, which is awesome. Um, Sharon is listening in. Um, she's doing something at home. So, you know, it's the two of us. We're we're double trouble tonight. <laughs> I keep forgetting to put this on Facebook, so I've got to, you know. Oh. I've got to advertise. Are you posting something? Like yeah. the picture that you just took? Yeah. I didn't even approve it. Oh, well, you can approve it. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Um, well, I'm going to get us set up live on Facebook, but why don't you reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners or introduce yourself for the first time to any listeners who are tuning in maybe for the first time or haven't heard you before on our show? Do you think that's possible? I don't think so, but you know what? This is what we're supposed to do. <laughs> So my name is Kristen Howlett. I am a full-time realtor at Boston Connect Real Estate in Pembroke. Um, My fifth year here, I love it. I love my people. I love uh, what I do. Um, Getting really ready for this spring market, which is cuckoo cuckoo already. Um, (laughs) I service anywhere in Massachusetts. Again, I say this all the time. I've gone to Sturbridge all the way down to the Cape. So I'm here for you, whatever you need. Whatever you need. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you've been here for five years. Five years. That's insane. I've been here for seven, and I can't believe that I uh, was here two years without you. I feel I like know. I've never been here without you. Mm-hmm. You're like you, a little you, sidekick. You you have been two years without me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I feel like we brought this up the other day. We were like, um, you know, I used to text you in the morning. Hi, are you coming to work today? It, you you are not required to be here, but like at nine o'clock, we're already thinking about okay, what are we getting for lunch? What's for lunch? <laughs> we send each other these memes back and forth of like all the memes they have out there saying like, oh, you're one coworker that's already thinking about lunch at ten a.m. <laughs> that's us. Mm-hmm. That is totally we're us. all about the memes. Hi, yeah, we'll call each other. Hi, um, so I'm on my way. What are we getting for lunch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> lunch is a big deal. You get a. It is. It is a big deal. Although tomorrow when I go to the doctors, it could be just healthy food. Yeah. I think I, I'm going to be on I a diet after the tomorrow. <laughs> I think I'm uh, going to be on a Yeah. Well, I am on a diet. I've been going back to the gym because I'm in a wedding. I might be like, Mel, what, what kind of shake are we going to have today? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I have to get back to like Should making the Should we do slow shakes. fast? No, I have to go back to doing <laughs> making shakes at the office because I yeah, used to make yeah. shakes all the time. Yeah. Um, Mary sort of got I'm me a hooked little, on that. Um, Disoriented? Yeah, like I can't. Oh, I'm gonna pull, pull well, you gotta forward. you gotta figure it out because well, we, we got maybe I'm not minutes. used to these. They're new. 
no, we've had these for months. And she's she's referring to our microphones. Oh, we've had them sure. for months. Mm. They're, they're, I think maybe today's better right, off wait, day. We're on a time clock here. We've got we've got ten big things to get through. So okay, so why don't is, okay? So I'm gonna get us set up on Facebook Live so everybody can see us, you our beautiful it. faces, mm-hmm. instead of just hearing our voices. So this was your idea. Mm-hmm. I want you to introduce our topic and sort of give a backstory of why you wanted to do this topic tonight. Our topic this evening is the top 10 reasons to list now. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but now, <laughs> like tonight. We're going to get all the phone calls. We're going to get all the phone calls. We're putting your house um, on the market tonight. Really, truly, it is. So, yeah, we, we need listings. We have so many buyers who are looking. One is to the left of me right now who are looking for houses, qualified pre-approved buyers and we need your homes so we're going to come up with the top 10 reasons why you should list we didn't come up with now. anything you came up with all i did 10, a lot of research I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna i'm gonna sort of challenge you on all of these mm. <laughs> i i have some statistics i have some opinion <laughs> and i just i'm gonna sling a little bit of you know good feelings about this okay so you want to do these topics because we do have low inventory in we this need market. The inventory. We have a ton of buyers. Yeah. I know that you're working with a, a few buyers right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but you've also been able to close on properties this year. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, it's it's possible. So it, it's happening. And, and houses, are, houses are listing. We're seeing it every day. I mean... What's crazy to me right now is the price point that is going at the first open house. Mm -hmm. Guess what it's not? What? Like the mid 400, 500. It's those eight, nine million dollar houses that are going under agreement at the first open houses. Yeah. That goes along with, I have a little statistic for that one. Okay. What's your Um, statistic? That the reason why that's happening is, sometimes I get confused with the Gen Xers and the millennials and the... I'm baby a millennial, boomers. so I'm 32. So the baby boomers okay. have all the equity in their homes, and they're the ones that are able to. That's why we're seeing that. Is there? So their why? Kind of, because they've been on their home for so long. Mm-hmm. The equity. The equity. Mm-hmm. Their houses have appreciated. Yeah, we, I, I hear all the time. I bought my house in 19 such and such for. Thirty thousand dollars, <laughs> but they, and then they say, "Oh, my interest rate was eighteen percent, or all this crazy yeah. stuff." But in yeah, so the interest rate is what six, seven now. But you're paying so much more for the actual house, and that's just what happens over time. I'm not an an, an economist. I'm not Lawrence Yoon, <laughs> Lawrence but Yoon, which I'm, we've I'm seen. pretty common sense. I I I I drive myself in common sense. Oh, I so what I have learned crazy Mm because I do that. What I have learned is that real estate is a is a good bet. It really is, and and because of things that you just said, people that bought thirty years ago, their houses have appreciated. Mm -hmm. I probably said this before. I'll say this before we get into the top ten. But during COVID, I started following these girls from Colorado, real estate agents, very successful real estate agents. And they started thinking about um, home appreciation and the values and the prices, and they did a deep dive. So they took, like, say their mom or their parents or their aunts and uncles, and they started doing CMAs on people who had purchased their homes, let's say, in, like, the 80s, late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And to see what, what would be the difference. And pretty much... To the penny, what they would have listed those houses for today is exactly that. Mm -hmm. It it, it worked out, apples to apples. And the idea was that if we didn't have that crash in 2008, where everything kind of went down and then it slowly crawled back up, if that had never happened, everything would have steadily increased and we would still be at the same, you know, everybody's trying to wrap themselves, their heads around, oh, it happened so fast. Well, it really didn't. It, the, during COVID, it did, but it definitely, if if it was slow and steady, it would have done the same exact thing. Exactly. And every time you move in your seat, it sounds like there's a squeak behind you, if Sorry. you know what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> so Sorry. stop moving around Sorry. in your seat. 
I'm so animated. <laughs> so animated today. I'm disoriented. Um, no, I, I totally, I totally get it. I mean, I just, I literally said this to somebody today who bought an investment property and said maybe that wasn't the right time to do it. You're investing in your future. It, it, you're gonna make it work. I know you. I know you're a hard worker. You're gonna make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just sort of the avenue that they're taking. Um, and it will pay off. Real it will pay pays off. off. Yeah. Real estate will yep. pay off. Yep. It's gonna be tough in the beginning. I'm thinking, you know, once I finally get my house, I'm like, oh, I keep thinking like the day after closing. That's what I'm thinking of. The day after closing, everybody walks away and goes back to their life. And I'm like, oh, but you're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. If I got myself here, I can get myself. And I do think that we did see a little. uh, Listen, I'm going to just start in number one. (laughs) Okay. Okay, Top 10 reasons to list your home now. Right. Meow. The first one, number one is. The housing market is heating up. I think we can all attest to that who work in this. Okay, so when you hear that, we did a show one time about like uh, common um, sayings in real estate and what they really mean. Like the 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 market's hot. This. uh, What do you mean by that when you say that? I mean that houses are the buyers are back. They were they were in a little bit of a slumber. Maybe November, December, January. We have statistics that show in February. They came out in January because February was was busy. Yeah. Houses are going under contract. Open houses. We're seeing multiple offers again. Yeah. I know we've probably already talked about 10 times the house in Hanson that had 30 offers on it. Yeah. So something that... I have noticed, and because now with the way that we can see things in MLS as a realtor, we can actually see the anticipated sale date, and something that I have seen sort of trending lately is like a longer... I knew you were going to say that. A longer closing time. Me too. And so, like... And I said this on air, The I put in an offer on the Hanson house and I gave a two-week close. It's a vacant home. I thought that that was something that sort of stuck out. Would and be appealing. Would be appealing yeah. to somebody who might not want to make another mortgage payment right. on a house that nobody is living in. Um, but I went back after they had an accepted offer and I saw a sort of very extended closing date. And so I was like, um, so there could be a couple different factors with that. Perhaps they accepted an offer that had a home sale contingency and maybe they hadn't had their house on the market yet. They need to market that and get it under agreement. Perhaps they do have a house under agreement already, but that's their anticipated closing date. Whatever it was, the closing date clearly did not matter. It was the other terms of the offer that got that offer accepted. I'm My guess is the price. <laughs> That's interesting that you say that, though, because I've noticed the same thing. Yes. Extended like 45 days plus. So as a buyer in this market, and again, I can't wait to do a show once I have a home, but as a buyer in this market, I thought that the fact that I can literally close, I'm already there very quickly would be appealing and I'm, and just because my that one offer didn't get accepted doesn't mean I'm like oh my god my uh, no offers are ever going to get accepted it it I'm seeing as a trend that like it's extended so me just being me I'm curious as to why <laughs> I want to know why always but uh, and you're looking at me like well, you're nuts well, well no I'm thinking I'm thinking could it be could it be um like the lender side yeah could they need more time well that's the other thing like i like i work with jasmine and from maritime mortgage and she's like i could literally like she knows me i'm like oh my gosh like i don't know if i want to close that quickly but like i will you know she's more of my cheerleader than i am for myself so she's like no you can do this i can do this yeah she's capable of getting a date and i'll make it work right like you're already there you're at the finish that's important if that's important I'm curious if there's other lenders or other programs that like just they're just not able to do that turnaround so fast. I think you're right, though. I think a lot of it could be contingencies, which I did put on here. That's one of my top 10. But we may be a little bit more lenient with contingencies on the list side because, well, Mm -hmm. especially a home sale contingency, because we know if it's priced right, it's not going to have any issue selling. So something for me, like... uh, there were, I think, three houses in my price range that came on the market last week. I didn't look at any of them because 
they were already at the top of my price point they most likely are going to go over. So I, I'm i not going to put myself in a position to fall in love over and over again, setting myself up for disappointment. Right. I wasn't going to go out of my way to go see a house at the top, tippity tip tip top of my budget, already anticipating that it was going to go over and, and try to compete with 30 other people. I just had buyers out this weekend and same thing. Yeah. It was an adorable, looked like it was out of Pinterest catalog. Yeah. Adorable house at the top of their budget. And I don't remember who told me this. It was either yesterday or today, and I don't remember. And I swear somebody, I, I'm looking at you when you talk, but I can't think of your who you were. To, they told me that they had clients looking at a house in maybe Quincy or Braintree, and they drove past the open house, and there were so many people that they didn't even bother going in. It's back. And it's back. Yeah. So I don't ever want to, I don't ever want to disappoint buyers. You need to have a good agent who will, yeah, like you just said, bring you down to reality and say, listen, we can't, we, maybe we can't look at this one. Maybe we've got to come down a little bit to give you a little bit of wiggle room. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to wait a couple months. Maybe you need yeah. to save a little bit more money. That's what we're working with, with, with that buyer. Well, this agent said to me, you know, I really wish that you would have gone in and just see, cause you just never know. That's sort of the situation. Like I wasn't necessarily going to put in my offer in the Hanson house, but Mary said, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Just throw your hat in the ring. And I agree. I agreed with Mary. And you agree yeah. with Mary. Yeah. Just throw your hat in the ring. Cause yeah. you just never know. You never know. You never right. know. And you don't know unless you try. Right. And I tried. And, and I also <laughs> I think we, you know, you, you you need to put that offer in because you gotta you know like we told you, you you're in this you're in this business with us you see us every single day with our customers so you have to go in with high hopes but also with a thick skin mm-hmm. because there is going to be some disappointment especially in this market but if we can get our sellers off the fence and look at the top 10 reasons why they should <laughs> sell their house I, I, can i make a little sure. thing so when you said customers, I don't like when it did agents, I say customers? You did, oh and I've gosh. never heard you say that. But it made me think to myself when I do hear realtors say, "Oh, my customer, my customer," I just it makes me feel like they're not relational. Like yeah. we work by referral. I would say probably eighty percent of all of our business in the company is working by referral. Like that's what we teach. That's what we practice ourselves, and. I feel like a customer is like it's not my customer. It's like Why I would I, say I that? work somewhere and they just come in like once a week, once a month to, to buy something coffee. to get their regular coffee. But it's like no, like we have relationships with our buyers, That's right. with our sellers, you know. So when people say customer, I'm like, okay, edit, oh, edit, edit, that edit, edit that out, please. Please, George. (laughs) And then everybody who's been listening, just, you know, just let it... Let it slide. Let it slide. Um, If you want to join in on the discussion, you can call George at the studio, 781-837-4900. We are live on Facebook, so give us a holla. Holla. Right. Give us a wave. We're waving. If you have any questions or want to, you know, join in and talk about the weather, talk about real estate, whatever, just let us know that somebody's listening to us. If time permits, I I always try to listen. And you've been having some great phone calls lately. Yes, People we engaging. have. Yeah, we've we've um, had really great feedback with some of our shows lately, and um, yeah, it's just been it's been great. All right, so I'm gonna beat play Melissa, and I'm gonna okay. get us back on track. Oh, okay. So um, my number one reason is the housing market is heating up. So we okay. are definitely seeing more buyers, more traffic, more demand, more multiple offers more like melissa said yeah. over asking now that is not always guaranteed but it is what we're starting to see trend mm-hmm. um number two would be home appreciation if you've lived in your house for you know not maybe not six months but even six months you could have some decent yeah. appreciation actually it's true because i have clients who just bought in somerset last year and i just sent them um a comp that is very similar to theirs and it was almost a hundred thousand dollars more wow. than what they bought for yeah um but home appreciation homeowners in 2022 gained an average of 34,300 in the third quarter i would be curious again my mind just goes there i would be curious if 
like I feel like that's very um, like by county or by town or mm-hmm. like it's very situational of where your home is located because there were a lot of people during COVID who left the city and left city life to live a more well, I don't know is this is it rural I don't know yeah suburban suburban lifestyle yeah. because you know they didn't want to be cooped up on top of each other in the city you know. We did many shows about this during COVID. A lot, and we helped a lot of people move from city cities down here. And now, guess what? And now what? They're going back to the city. They're going back. It's right back. Yeah, that took a hit for a while, but now it's now it's back. So I think that statistic was from National Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. Um, Gained an average of thirty four thousand three hundred in equity in the third quarter. and again, what, I yeah, did so try last to, year. So what's third quarter? So it's July, what, July 1st to July, August, September? Yep. Which October makes 1st. Makes sense, which was the yeah. hottest time. Um, again, a lot of these I tried to stay hyper local, but mm-hmm. some of them are NAR, some of them are MAR, some of them are realtor.com um, and Zillow. Um, number three. You said the Z word. You know, number three would um, is the third reason is buyer demand is high. Mm-hmm. We have so many pre-qualified, pre-approved, strong buyers. Interestingly enough, today when I did my research, um, the one thing that is going down is, I'm going to quiz you. Oh. Uh, the one thing that is going down is down payment amount. Why do you think that is? Down payment amount. like So, with, so over at last closing year. Or at, at like purchase and sales and stuff. Buyers are coming up with less of a down payment. Why do you think that is? As opposed to last year. Buyers you know the answer. Up with, I know the answer. Um, because it has to do with maybe some rates. Well, because the rate is higher and they're probably purchasing a home that is a higher price. Um, maybe they're doing like they're buying their points and they're lowering their rate. So the money that they would have used towards yeah. their down payment they're yeah, using so they're for probably other things. they're probably in a different loan program mm-hmm. correct so now they're either paying points or not paying points or maybe they're they were doing an arm and now they're doing a 30 year fix and these are all things i've been in the business uh, it was i worked at a real estate office before coming here so maybe 9 years and i didn't really understand mortgage rates or mo- like I mortgage programs or anything until i was pre-approved and had my discussion with jasmine and even every single house that i've gone for it's like oh i you know jasmine sits me down and says here this is where i think that you should be and this is what it is like you make the final decision but like this is the program that would keep you in where you want monthly payments this is what you can do for a down payment you know and i started off with a certain percentage down payment but over time i actually have increased my payment my down payment so based off of a different loan program. Right. Okay, yeah, I'll do a higher down payment so I can get into this better program because at the end of the day, and this, I don't know if I'm revealing too much, but I have the down payment. I can right. do more as a down payment. It's what happens after. And I think that's the point. Some, they probably still have the same amount. It's not like they yeah. lost it. Yeah, but, but they might not have to. They might not have to. They might to. not have to. And for them, it might be, hey, my payment went up a little bit. Yeah. I'd rather have that that money, you know, in a little rainy day fund in case I need it. Yeah. You know, it can go up three to $500. And I feel like it definitely depends on sort of where your range is price wise. So like a lot of like maybe up to four, 450, it's a lot of first time home buyers. So Mm -hmm. they might be 3% down. They might be 5% down because they're just starting out. They don't have, they're not pulling equity from a house that they're selling, you know, but some, maybe a higher priced, you know, price point, you can do the 10% down, the 15, the 20, the higher, you know, I wish I had, I wish I had, um, noted also FHA and VA loans were both increased, Uh um, in the first quarter of January and February of this year, which makes sense too, because they were kind of beat out of the market. They, in order to be competitive, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like a lot of those 
those loans really yeah. didn't get a chance to be competitive, and now they are, which is a great thing. Yeah, I think, but it, I think it also comes down to is the agent educated on mm. these different either loan programs or what it really means for the down payment? Like, are there other parts of the the offer that are really appealing? And I think it's always so so important for a buyer's agent to call a listing agent and say, "What are your clients looking for?" Do they want a quick close? Do they, or do they want, want some time? Do they want some time? Because in reality, it, it's re- and I promise, it's not always about the money. Like right. it, it could be somebody who is giving them all the time in the world to find their next house. You know, so they come in and they they give what they can and they you know make their offer as as great as they can. But they are saying, okay, you have three months to find a house. Well, that's great. That any any time frame that is given to a seller is 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 great from a buyer. Hundred percent. As long as the buyer is in a position where they could give. I should have put that down. So that is I that is that number eleven? Mm-hmm. No. Yes. I'm gonna oh. piggyback it on one of my. Okay. <laughs> um, so so to recap, the housing market is heating up. Home appreciation is on the rise. Most people will have some sort of a equity in their homes. Um, buyer demand is high. Mm -hmm. and inventory is low. So what does that mean? If inventory is low and buyer demand is high and we price your house right, it's going to sell. Yeah. It's pretty much a a guarantee that if it is priced right and is in decent condition, it is going to sell. Yeah. I I haven't seen a ton of... um Price adjustments. Yeah, lately. Yeah, I we did. did. See, I did see one that was an increase. Oh, yeah. So what does that mean? <laughs> it increased overnight. Yeah. Maybe it was. Maybe they had an offer that was above, and now they're thinking, "Hey, let's bring it up." Uh, maybe. Possibly. That is one tactic that somebody could do. <laughs> so since we, um, since we're talking about, sometimes I think we have a habit of talking, thinking that everybody understands, but. When we say that inventory is low, what does that really mean? And it's, are there enough homes for sale to meet the buyer's demand? And right now, there is not. There is not. But the more that the more houses that come on the market, the, the better chance that a seller is able to find their next home. In February of 2023, okay. there were 11,010 homes for sale in Massachusetts. And that average is down 4.6% year over year. Mm. The number of newly listed homes was 4,177, and it was down 24.6. I'm not surprised there. So inventory is low. So if you want to sell your house, you're going to have less competition selling your house. Mm -hmm. Um, Number five, is that Roman numeral five? Yeah. (laughs) Home prices are up. The median price... According to Redfin, for Massachusetts or for Massachusetts is five. Oh, yes, five hundred and twenty-three thousand four hundred. That was in Massachusetts, and it's up two point six percent. So again, the first thing I think of with this is everybody who's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna wait until the market crashes." I don't think it's gonna crash. To sell their house, they're gonna wait to, until they- to buy. To buy. Um, I'm going to hold off on any real estate needs. Yeah, until. I mean, even if it did, like, why would anybody, why would somebody sell if they had, you know, a great rate in their in their home and they have equity, like, and if there's nothing else to buy, like, why wouldn't, like, you would just sort of manipulate the home that you already have to yeah. suit your everyday needs. But and I feel like a lot of people did that during COVID. Oh, 100%. But if you're looking to sell... Home prices are up on the average. They're not going... I think they went down... um, This uh, existing home sales, on a national level, 14.5%, it was actually down like 0.002. It was a tiny percent that came down in the home prices, but they think it's kind of just a wash. Mm -hmm. So anyone waiting for... Any of the buyers waiting for that price to go down, it's likely not going to happen, which is a good thing for the sellers because the prices are still up. Um, Homes are also selling quickly. So to your point, if maybe, maybe they want to, 
they want to negotiate the terms, yeah. but at least they're getting offers and they're getting their houses under agreement quicker mm-hmm. than being on the market and sweating it out like, oh my gosh, is this ever going to sell? Yeah. Um, there was a house on my street that was on. It was on since October. Yeah. Um, maybe it was, it, it's what it ultimately sold for. It was definitely off on price and it sat and they were sweating it out. They were definitely like, what is this going to sell? Yeah. I uh, even so okay. I have a couple things with this one. I guess they like it probably sat on the market a because it was not priced correctly. So that is why it's super important to price a home to the condition that it's in. Um, and uh, honestly, like you'd even if you priced it to what the condition it's in, you'd probably still get over mm. because somebody sees that number and they're like, oh yeah, like I think it's worth that and maybe a little bit more. Like we say all the time, it's virtually impossible to underprice, but you can very easily overprice. Yeah. But a couple of months ago, I had seen personally, I was going to showings at homes that I felt were overpriced and they sat on the market for a while. These were a couple homes that I saw. They sat on the market for a while and I was told, why don't you just throw a number at them? Throw a number at them. But me, also being in the industry, I didn't want to insult anybody, but I was like, I just don't see the value. And what happened? They all came down in price. Mm -hmm. They all kept coming down in price. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they ended up selling for less than they went on the market though. Well, do you want to know how quickly they're selling? How quickly? Median days on market in Massachusetts is 33 days, according to Redfin. So is that from list to sale day? Days on market. Okay, yeah. but what do you measure days on market? So is it days on market to a cl- to an accepted offer, or is it days on market to a closing date? I don't know. You don't know. But no, I I'm, would saying, think I'm saying for from you, accepted you offer, measure- from accepted offer to close... That's what I would measure it, from accepted offer to close. Oh, no? really? Uh, Never even heard of that. I don't know. Maybe. I would I would think of days on market like if you if it has an accepted offer. Like I don't see how it's still on the market. Like it has an accepted offer. It's contingent. Oh yeah, you're right. It's contingent. Oh, now it's under agreement. So contingent meaning you have an accepted offer, but there's some sort of contingency that you need to get over or get through in order to get to the next step in your buying journey. I should have clarified that. Yeah. I think Julia did a typo. (laughs) (laughs) You can't blame Julia. I'm just kidding, Julia. You did a great job. (laughs) Um, Julia added this, buying with urgency to make sure that they secure a new home. She's right. She's right. The buyers that... I thought you were coming up with these 10 things. I did, but she always adds. She does does fluff it up a little bit. Which number are we on? We are on six. Homes are selling quickly. That's six. Homes are selling quickly. Buying with urgency. Okay. Buying with urgency to make sure they secure a new home. So maybe that's why. Elaborate. (laughs) I think Julie added that to to show that why are they selling quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Buyers, we do have qualified buyers who want to get into a home. They've waited. I think a lot of the people, I think a lot of people still, we, we hear this day after day, people had sold during COVID and they're living with relatives or they're renting someplace and, oh, I'll rent for a year and now the rates went up and now it's, you know, yeah, all of these things that are requiring them. Now they're, they're really, okay, we've got to do this. Yeah. We can't, we, the rates are, the rates are six, 7%. Yeah. Let's just get on with it. We have an agent actually who um, helped somebody recently get a rental in like a condo community um so they're renting one of the condos because they really want to live that they want to buy in the condo um association but they felt like to have sort of like a one-up and like be in the know and but they want to be there so they're renting there it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to buy the condo that they're renting, but they want to be submerged in sort of the community. And and, and also it's a great way of sort of That's a great idea. knowing yeah. if you are going to love it or not and sort of you have sort of an easy way out if you don't. Yeah, yeah. But they've brilliant. always really wanted to live in this certain community. One came up for rent, so they were like, we want to rent it, sort of be in the know of like what's going on because we want to buy in here. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So there's an option. (laughs) So number seven is um, buyers are, we're back to them waiving contingencies. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe not so much the home sale contingency, which we talked about before, Mm -hmm. um, but home inspections, which I would never tell somebody to waive a home inspection, but I think people are still thinking, if I do it, it will get us a leg up. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I admitted that I, I waived my home inspection, which I would never, ever do before but i did except because because of the certain the the house that i was putting in an offer and i just didn't feel like it there was anything that was going to come up and you had somebody come and take a peek at it yeah Yeah. and and the offer that i got accepted in december i did do a home inspection yeah that house in my opinion needed a home inspection yeah yeah which i'm glad i did yeah so you know it you can have it both ways (laughs) Okay, number eight is my favorite. Um, The number eight reason to sell your home now, to list your home now, is because Realtor.com has designated the best time to sell is the week of April 10th through April 16th. Oh, why? Have you ever heard that before? No. Nationally, the best time to list a home is the week of April 10th through April 16th, according to Realtor.com. I want to know why. According to the Z word, Mm. they determined that the best time to sell a home nationally on average is mid-March through mid-April. So kind of spot on with Realtor. Um, Well, because we know that it starts our spring market, starts right after Super Bowl. Yeah, but spring weather... Are we talking about weather now? No, we're talking about the spring market. So no, spring, but I'm curious as to why it's April. Because they're just kind of basing it on if spring market starts the day after the Super Bowl, if you count, Super Bowl's usually, what, second week in February? Yeah. That kind of adds up to April 16th. It's probably, a, it's probably year over year a lot of closings, a high number of closings. They're it says, averaging. It says the best time to list a home. Oh, yeah, the these best are, time to these sell are your, home. These are your, th- that's why I'm like, why? <laughs> Is it around Easter? <laughs> Maybe I'm having a hard time <laughs> comprehending. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the nationally, the best time to list yeah, a home. List a home. April. We're talking about oh, selling well, your house. you know what? Interestingly, okay. April I'm going to go on this. Maybe April vacation, but also people are thinking, you know, if you're a family and you have children, you think about the end of the school year. Mm-hmm. April, May, June. Yeah, that makes more sense than Way what you were sense. saying before. I'm so glad I caught myself yeah. on that one. Oh, no, I called you out. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. And that was that was supposed to be your favorite one. You said, this is my favorite one. Because you- <laughs> well, I just thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, all right. All right, so moving on to nine. <laughs> um. <coughs> the number nine reason to list your home now is your housing needs may have changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, this we've is, seen that. This is, yes, and I have seen this a ton in Bridgewater. People that I know who are empty nesters who are now selling their home because mm-hmm. they don't need that big house anymore and they yeah. want less maintenance and they want to move to the They don't want to age in place. They don't want to age in place. It's mm-hmm. too big. It's too big. Their houses are too big. Mm-hmm. They want something little, small, little, too big. The right sizing. Right sizing. Yeah. Getting the home that's the right size for them. On the flip side, mm-hmm. I do have buyers, sellers who um, have who bought two years ago, and now they're busting out at the seams. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. need to up. They need. They need to upsize. Upsize. Still right sizing because right they size. need a they need a new home for the right size of of whatever living dynamic they are, um, but we have seen this uh, sort of in our lives and and with our clients is sometimes like emergencies happen yeah. and your your living dynamic changes. Um, you know, perhaps family needs to come and live with you. Perhaps family no longer lives with you. Yeah. There are things that happen in life that are natural in life that will change your living dynamic instantly. So it's it's sort of, it changes the, the demand that you have for your house. Like again, you're saying, okay, yeah, this, you know, four bedroom colonial is just way too big. If for some reason two people go to one one person... 
it's too much room for one person. So their living dynamic has changed. They have to change where they live. I'm already counting down the days until we right size. Till Owen is off on his own and we are right sizing. You're going to sell your house? Definitely. Yeah? I'm on a little teeny baby house. A little teeny baby house? Down that the I can clean. Maybe. Maybe Marshfield. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Somewhere near the beach. Somewhere near the beach. Mm-hmm. Well, that's um, good. So, yeah, so number nine, the the reason to list now, don't think about it. Maybe you want to move to Florida. Maybe you want to move to South Carolina. Maybe you want to move to nice, warmer weather. Maybe you don't want to shovel anymore. Maybe you want to be a snowbird. Maybe you want to be a snowbird. Maybe you but just... it doesn't mean that you don't have to own something here. I mean, you can spend six months there, six months here. Yeah. You know, there are, we talked about this in our condo. It wasn't you. It was Tracy um, on our condo show where... You know, a condo is a great alternative living situation for somebody who is a snowbird because you don't have to worry about a lot of things like especially exterior maintenance to a condo or you live in a condo association. I'm just thinking of Lori. She has um, a, a condo in New Hampshire where they're just all so close up there so like if something were to happen like they help each other out yeah. like yeah. there's always somebody there and then they have a management company that will take care of things too so right. it, she never she she's never concerned she just goes and enjoys it yeah she goes and enjoys it and that's what everybody should experience that they should get to a point in their life where they get to enjoy where they live no? preach yeah. listen I'm preaching yeah that's it you just you just hit you hit number nine right over the head. <laughs> okay. Because your needs may have changed. We started off on like a not a negative note, but sometimes you're right. Things happen and people have to sell their house. But then sometimes you just wanna sell your house because you wanna enjoy your life. Yeah. My husband just got back from Florida the whole time since he's been home the whole way home. He's like, We could live in Florida. We could live down there. You could work down there. You could do this, you could do that. Maybe in a few years. He would never. I, he I would never. Move. I it's a nice and theory. <laughs> it's nice and theory. But like I said, we can downsize, move down there, and then we can go rent something down there for a month. Yeah. And live there for a month. We don't have to live there forever. There's so many options. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to hear number ten? I do. I'm. I'm. Well, on the, the number seat. ten reason why you should list your house now is so that you have the opportunity to work with me. <laughs> such a goof oh okay tell everybody why that would be great for them (laughs) well I'm very good at what I do and working with a professional agent will help you guide this is Julia's Julia added this (laughs) working with a professional agent can help guide you through every step of the home selling journey we have knowledge of the current market and we can help you with pricing your home correctly Mm mm-hmm We will always look out for your best interest. We will help with negotiating and advocating for you to assure the right offer comes your way and you can make a good decision. Yeah, I feel like making a good decision is always the right right way to go. And again, you would have the opportunity to work with me and I'm fun. Yeah. Listen. Can't you tell? We are so much fun. And I'm saying we, even though you're promoting yourself, but you can be my friend. You can be her client. You can be my friend. <laughs> well, if you're my client, you're inevitably going to be touched by you. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you should have worded that a little differently. I really <laughs> hope that anyone who's listening, the one viewer <laughs> on Facebook, but the many people, I mean, I'm sure we have a thousands listening on ATD that you got you got some good tidbits about my top 10 reasons <laughs> especially to number home. 10 and give that number one more time number 10 is what that you have the opportunity to list your home with Kristen Howlett and how can everybody get in touch with you Kristen Howlett you can you can find me on Facebook where Kristen how? Howlett Realtor oh Sometimes if you want to get a glimpse of my personal life, it's just Kristen Howlett. Kristen, you birdie Howlett. Instagram, you can call me 617-448-4896. One more time. 617-448-4896. Text me, call me. Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Mm -hmm. That was on Kim Possible, I think. I'm having a little hot flash. All right. 
Well, uh, it is. It gets very warm in here. The the light over there just oh, wait, shines on me. Oh, we have to go through um, okay. what people are looking oh, for. Oh yeah. So what is everybody looking for? Um, oh geez, Louise. Oh yeah. We don't we have time. For that. We got a lot. You know what? I think I'm going to make a post. So follow Boston Connect Real Estate on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm going to make a post tomorrow with all of our agents, um, what their what their clients are looking for. Um, um, everybody knows what I'm looking for. Quickly so. perusing through. Yeah. There's. Um, I will say we have. We are looking for everything. Oh, well, you, you're you on the show, so you say who what you're looking for. Um, I am looking. I'm actually really looking for somewhat of a fixer-upper. Um, Attleboro, Rentham, Norfolk, Foxboro, uh, Rentham, um, that area. Mm-hmm. Um, four, 400, um, but it can be a fixer-upper. Um, okay. He, he's, he's not shy. He's very well qualified. <clears throat> um a townhouse or a condo, especially in Bridgewater, the Bridgewater Rainham area, East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater. Why is it um, on here twice? You have two buyers looking two for Two buyers, oh. yeah. One. Okay, so you have two buyers looking for a townhouse or a condo around, what's your price point? Um, she is uh, mid threes. Okay. Yeah, mid to high threes. Well, which one? You said you had two. Two. Um, the other one I'm hoping is okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so you have somebody okay. looking mid threes. Townhouse or condo? What er, what area? What um, Bridgewater Rainham. It, ha, it, it it she wants Bridgewater Rainham School District. Doesn't want to switch her kids out. Yeah. And the other is again um, Norfolk, uh, Attleboro. Anything Fixer up upper. in that? Yeah. Yep. Fixer any upper. style? Any... any style? He's not picky. Yep. Nice. Yep. He's tall. He's tall. He's like I think six ten. So he, it needs to be high ceilings. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah. So there's a requirement. You got to yeah. see these things. Well, these. what's funny is we went to look at a colonial in Attleboro. It was adorable. Mm-hmm. And I was worried the about the upstairs. Are too low. But no, you know what? They had they had bumped out. Oh, they went nice. up in the attic. And actually, it was we were pleasantly surprised. Nice. The, the basement was kind of tight for them. Mm. But, um, That's oh, right. yeah. So a basement with high ceilings. He can oh, handle. Okay. See, we're exploring more options yeah. <laughs> or yeah. more requirements for your buyer as as we talk. Um, Team Flynn has a lot of... Um, yeah, Team Flynn has a lot. Um, yeah. But like I said, follow Boston Connect Real Estate on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll do a little... Uh, I'll, I'll create a Canva tomorrow and I'll put out a post what everybody is looking for. for. And if you're curious, um, we can send you out a CMA to give yeah. you an idea of what your home is valued at. Oh, That yes. would be the first step. Yeah. I'm also supposed to be saying this. So the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce is doing a meet and greet after hours event here at Boston Connect Real Estate um, on April 11th. They're going to be coming on our show, too. It's from 5 to 7. It's an open house, so please come and join. We're going to be promoting it um, all for our next show. So come and meet the um, Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. Again, April 11th, 5 to 7, here at 19 Mattachusett Street in Pembroke Center. Boston Connect Real Estate, thank you so much. It's going to be a fun time. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. Thanks, George. Have a great night. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you.